Okay, this is the fifth and final part of our lesson on analyzing. Um, well, the lesson has been about graphing and analyzing rational functions. Um, I think we're out of the graphing phase. So in this video, we will uh, stick to analyzing these rational functions. All right, for number 11, we're supposed to find the uh, asymptotes x-intercepts, y-intercepts, um, but we're given the graph, so makes it kind of easy, I think. So, asymptotes. Start with that. Let's see, what do we see? I see two asymptotes. <clears throat> I see the vertical one, and I see a slant asymptote. Alright, the vertical one is uh, at 3. So that's x equals 3. Make sure you don't just say 3 you have to say x equals 3 all right to show that it is a vertical asymptote okay um, now the slant asymptote <clears throat> is a line like uh, y equals mx plus b so um, we need the uh, y-intercept to be able to do it so 1 2 3 so the y-intercept seems to be here at 3 and then we need the slope so it seems to be going up 1 over 1. Okay, as I look at it, it's going up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. Okay, so the slope is 1 and the y-intercept is 3. So when I talk about y equals mx plus b, um, because the y-intercept is 3, I know that there will be a 3 at the end. Um, the slope, like I said, is up 1 over 1. Okay, so this is going to give me y equals x plus 3. All right, for my slant asymptote. All right, that's it for the asymptotes. Um, now, x-intercept, y-intercept. Um, all right, the y-intercept... Okay, the y-intercept is right here. Let me color it better. All right, the y-intercept is where the function crosses the y-axis. So it, it seems to be somewhere between um, 1 and 2. Somewhere between 1 and 2. So, uh, you know, 1.5 or something like that. Um, just estimate. So y-intercept is 0 comma 1.5. Alright, without a function we are left to estimate as best we can. Alright, now the x-intercept or should I say x-intercepts um, because it crosses the x-axis here and here. Okay, now this is 1 and 2. So something close to negative 2, maybe a little bit to the left of negative 2. So I'm going to say like for example negative 2.2 maybe. Um, you know, estimate, do your best. Uh, so negative 2.2 comma 0. Um, but then we have another one over here a little bit to the right of 2. So I'll say positive 2.2 comma 0. Almost messed up. 2.2 comma. So negative 2.2 comma 0, positive 2.2 comma 0. All right, but if you said negative 2.3 or negative 2.4, um, I would give it to you. Uh, what else you need? What else you need? We need the domain and the range. Well, the domain is the x values. All right, um, this function goes to the left forever and to the right forever but it skips this one x value of 3 because of the vertical asymptote. So we'll say negative infinity to 3 and 3 to positive infinity for the domain. Okay, and the range, the range is the y values. 
So we have to go from bottom to top. And that's why they gave us this 1, 2. Um, this is supposed to represent the local maximum. So see the 1, 2, that's the local maximum. But what we really need right now is that y value. All right, and of course the y value is the 2. Okay, similarly over here, this is the point 5, 10. And it's the y value that we're going to need is the 10. So we got the 2 and the 10. All right, so the y values go from negative infinity up to 2. Okay, so that's the first branch negative infinity to 2. Now this local maximum is not an asymptote or anything. It reaches 2. It touches 2. Um, so that's going to be a squared bracket. And then there's a gap in the y values and it picks up again here at a y value of 10. So 10 to positive infinity. And again it touches 10. It reaches it. So when we do the 10 it will be a bracket. So that's the range. Okay, did they say increasing and decreasing this time? Nope, so that's it for number 11. Number 12, write a rational function with vertical asymptotes here and here, and a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, well, first of all, I need vertical asymptotes at these two things. So the vertical asymptotes are all about the denominator. So if I'm going to get x equals 2, I need x minus 2 in the denominator. All right, that'll give me that vertical asymptote. Now, what about this? x equals 3 over 2. Okay, um, well, let's work backwards. If I have x equals 3 over 2, I could multiply both sides by 2, could I not? And that would give me 2x equals 3, you know, because those would cancel out. And then <clears throat> I could subtract 3 from both sides. So that would give me 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so that would give me a factor working backwards of 2x minus 3. Um, you're not allowed to put, you're not allowed to just go x over, x minus 3 over 2. That's no good. Okay, so this is what we need in the denominator. Okay, now, for the horizontal asymptote to be y equals negative 2. Um, now, when we deal with the horizontal asymptote, we only have a couple of options. Um, either we're going to have no horizontal asymptote, or it's going to be 0, or it's going to be a over c. So, um, only one of these has a chance at being... Um, negative 2. And uh, so we only can get negative 2 from this a over c option. So we need the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator to be equal. So we can do the a over c option. And then we need to make sure that a over c turns out to have a value of negative 2. So that's our, that's our goal. Um, now to help me out I think it might be good to go ahead and multiply these um, together. If you multiply these out, you know, double distributive property, you know, x times that, da 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 da, shabam, shabam. All right, I'm going to trust that you know how to do that. We've done it like a hundred times. Because um, I'm going to do it in my head. So x times 2x is 2x squared, right? Um, but this part we'll do in our head. So um, outer, we have negative 3x. Inner, we have negative 4x. So negative 3x, negative 4x together make negative 7x. 
and then negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. So this is what you would get if you multiplied it out. Now, anyway, the degree is obviously 2. So we need something where uh, up here the degree needs to be 2 as well. So whatever else happens, we need this to be x squared. All right, again, we need the degree of the numerator to equal the degree of the denominator so we can do the a over c option. So, so far, so good. Um, now, the a over c that we're referring to, these are the leading coefficients. Okay, they're the numbers in the front. So, as I have it right now, I have a leading coefficient of 1 and 2. So if I just stopped right now, I'd have a horizontal asymptote of 1 half because of these. Okay, that's no good. Now, I can't do anything about the 2. I'm stuck with that. Okay, because um, I needed that to get the correct uh, vertical asymptotes. So I can't change that. Um, but I want to uh, come up with uh, y equals negative 2 when I do the a over c. So um, imagine that this was a leading coefficient of 4. Then that would give me 4 over 2, um, which would give me 2. So that's getting closer. Um, what about if it was a negative 4? Then my a over c would be negative 4 over 2, which would be negative 2. Okay, um, so that's what it would take. Now, you could put whatever you want on the rest of this, all right? You could leave it alone and just stop right there, um, or you could make up random stuff and put whatever you want, like x minus 1. This green part is optional. Um, so for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave it out. So there it is. This is the function that gets the job done. Okay, I just OCD requires that I put the um, f of x in front of here. Okay, so this is one answer. Um, you could put optional stuff here. All right, anyway, moving on. So that was number 12 we just did. Number 13, write a rational function with no vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. OK, if there's going to be no vertical asymptote, um, that means all right. At first, I thought number 13 was possible, impossible. Um, but then I uh, spoke to one of my colleagues, and I realized what they were shooting for. The, um, all right, so it comes down to two things. If um, we want the function so that the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, that's only going to happen if the numerator degree is less than the denominator. On the other hand, if there are no vertical asymptotes, all right, this is the part that was messing me up. So I was thinking that meant that there couldn't be any x's in the, in the denominator. Um, well, the thing is you can as long as it doesn't have any real zeros, OK? In other words, um, consider the following example. Say if I had f of x equals, OK? And I'll just put x up here. So in the denominator, I need a degree bigger than a degree 1, so that I'll have the y equals 0. So for example, x squared, I could put. All right, now all I have to do is put something like plus 4. And um, even though there's an x here, there are still no, um, there's still no vertical asymptote. And the reason why is because if I try to set the denominator equal to 0, to, uh, to get that vertical asymptote, look what happens. If 
For example, if I do x squared plus 4 equals 0, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So that'll give me x squared equals negative 4. <clears throat> but then I would take the square root of both sides, and that would give me x equals plus or minus 2i. All right, well, 2i does not give you a vertical asymptote nor does negative 2i, all right? They are imaginary. They don't show up as, as asymptotes, all right? So as long as it doesn't have any real solutions um, when you set it equal to 0, then uh, it's OK. So this solves the problem. Um, the top degree is less, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Um, but the bottom, if we set it equal to zero, we don't get any solutions. No, well, we get no real solutions. So therefore, no vertical asymptotes. So um, try to come up with something different. Um, if you're watching this video for a, a homework assignment that you're going to hand in to me, do not give me the same exact function off of this video. If you do, I'm taking off a point. All right, so change something, OK? Um, you know, make it be substantially different, but you can use the same idea to help you. So, number 14. Write a rational function with vertical asymptote x equals negative 3 and horizontal asymptote y equals 2. Okay, so f of x equals vertical asymptote at um, x equals negative 3, that means I definitely need a factor of x plus 3 in the denominator. Um, if the horizontal asymptote is going to be 2, again, we have limited options on the horizontal asymptote. Sometimes there's no horizontal asymptote, sometimes it's 0. Neither one of those things is going to help me. The only option that I can work with is the option where I can uh, make it be the leading coefficients. Um, so for that to happen, the degree of the numerator has to be equal to the degree of the denominator. OK, so the degree has to be equal. So right now, the degree of the denominator is 1. Um, OK, so I could make the degree of the numerator 1 as well, just by putting an x up there. So I might not need parentheses. So, so far, so good. All right, so at least I'm into the zone of leading coefficients, OK? Um, however, um, the way it is right now, the leading coefficients are 1 and 1. So that would give me y equals 1, because like a over c. I need it to be 2. Um, so OK, how about if I make this a 2? All right, so that would make 2 over 1, which is 2. Um, that would do it. So I think that this is the simplest function that satisfies the requirements. There are more complicated functions that you could make, um, but this looks like the simplest. So let me just clean it up a bit. So 2x over x plus 3, that's like the most basic. All right, but there are multiple correct answers for that one. So that was number 14. OK, number 15. Given this mess, explain what is occurring at x equals 4. What are the asymptotes? OK, well, let's factor it and see what's going on. So this factors as um, difference of two squares. So x plus 4 times x minus 4. Down here, I got the GCF happening. So if I pull out the 2x, that's going to leave behind x minus 4. OK, so here's what they're talking about. We have uh, the same factor in the numerator and the denominator. So the x minus 4s are going to cancel out. So there won't be a 
a vertical asymptote out of that. Instead, when they cancel out, that is a hole. All right, there's a hole at. Now, if you set this equal to zero, that tells you where the hole is going to be. So there's a hole at x equals 4. So when they say what's occurring at x equals 4, um, there's a hole there. OK. Um, so that's, that's the answer to um, A. Um, now for B, what are the asymptotes? So notice there will not be a vertical asymptote at x equals 4, because there's a hole there instead. Um, so forget about that. So now you can just focus your eyes on the remaining part of this function. So looking at that, there will still be a vertical asymptote because of um, the x that's in the denominator. So, um, you know, because the vertical asymptotes come from setting the denominator equal to 0. If I set 2x equal to 0, dividing by 2 on both sides, I still get x equals 0. All right, maybe I should show the division. So x equals 0 is an asymptote, All right, a vertical asymptote. Now, what about horizontal or slant asymptotes? Well, look at the degree. Um, the top now has degree 1, and the bottom has degree 1. They're the same. So when the uh, numerator degree is equal to the degree of the denominator, that's when the horizontal asymptote comes from the leading coefficients. So the leading coefficients here, okay, are 1 and 2, all right? It's an invisible 1 right there, all right? So 1 half. So that is the horizontal asymptote is a over c, 1 over 2. All right, um, so that's it. That's it for number 15. Oh my goodness, did I finally reach the end of this lesson? Thought it would never end. What is this, five videos? And they're all long ones too. Um, all right, thank goodness. So. Yeah, I hope it was helpful because I'd sacrificed like hours of my life to make these videos, people. Um, I will see you on the next video.